This building that we're sitting in is the New College of the Humanities, which uh, I founded uh, about six years, seven years ago, and um, I'm the master of it, and I teach here also. I'm the professor of philosophy here, uh, and I also write. In term times, I get up early and I go to bed late, and I get writing done at the two bookends of the day. And this is because uh, it's a refreshment to me. I mean, I so love to get back in to the work that I'm doing, the books that I'm writing at the time. But the role of teacher is a very interesting one. I mean, when um, people are, are very young, obviously they need guidance and their teachers will know more than they do and can impart some of those bits of information, but more importantly, the skills needed to, to learn. But when you're a university teacher, maybe the word teacher is the wrong word. Maybe you're a, a guide or a partner because people really teach themselves in the end. All the most important things we know uh, and the deepest insights that we achieve are ones that we actually own ourselves. We, we do them ourselves. I think uh, philosophers are a small section of thinkers. Human beings are thinkers. Indeed, all human beings are philosophers in their way. It's a very common experience that uh, when you go out at, uh, in the evening and uh, having a few drinks with your friends, you get involved in philosophical discussion as the evening goes on. Indeed, you get smarter as the evening goes on too. And you get really stuck into all the great questions that affect us as human beings. Um, because I think our curiosity, our need to try to make sense of the world that we occupy, which is pre precisely the philosophical quest, is something innate in us. If you think about all the questions we can ask about ourselves uh, and our lives that begin with W, you know, who am I, um, where am I, what is this world that I'm in, uh, what, why am I doing what I'm doing, I mean, all those sorts of questions will impact the relationships that you have. I mean, we know that um, we are social beings. In fact, we are essentially social beings. And therefore, our relationships matter hugely to us, our friendships and our, our uh, uh, most intimate connections with one another. But in, in order fully to appreciate those and to develop them to their very uh, highest and best possibility requires also uh, to know things, to, to learn uh, and to be alert to the world. It's probably true that very little time is ever wasted, even the time that we think of as wasted, because we're always learning. And uh, those moments where we shut down for a little while when we're tired and relaxing, lying on a beach or staying in bed on a Sunday morning, they have their value too. So it's important um, not to uh, fail to recognize uh, that we are always busy kind of rewiring, rebooting, even when we're doing it subconsciously. So no time is really wasted. I think there are two sorts of things that are most worth one's time. One is when one learns or understands something better, when one achieves a greater appreciation of something, whatever it might be, an interest that one has or, or a piece of work that one's doing. And the second and perhaps even more important one, of course, is the time that we spend with people that we really care about. Because uh, in the end, when you sum up um, what little remains to us at the very end of our lives from the things that are supremely important. They will be those moments where we um, felt that we were able successfully to express our, our tenderness or our love for another person, or when we ourselves feel that we're loved, and that's a really wonderful feeling, of course. Technology hasn't um, given us more leisure, that's for sure. I mean, if you've got an iPhone in your pocket, then you are connected with your colleagues and with work and with your commitments 24 hours a day. Whereas in the past, before all these wonderful devices, you could uh, escape at a certain point and, and uh, be, be free of that. But it's also helped us to be much more productive, obviously. It's also helped us to be much more connected as well. You know, people talk about their anxieties about young people forever twiddling their thumbs on their, on their phones, um, looking at Facebook or on social media and sending Instagram messages to people. But this means actually that they're more connected than they were before. Of course, there are downsides to it as well. So we have to ask ourselves, what is the ethical balance about their use and about what they do for us and do to us? Uh, and in particular, will it ever be the case really that they do liberate us to have more time to be creative and thoughtful about our lives and about our relationships.